Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I want to invite you to hit that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment if you will. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive all of our updates. God bless you. Come on, let's get to the Word. So let me give you, there's more than this, but let me give you five reasons why I believe that every believer should study and at least get a basic understanding of eschatology and the prophetic Word of God. So number one, it validates itself. There are more than, we talked about this a few weeks ago, there are more than 300 prophecies about the first advent of Jesus Christ. He fulfilled every single one. There are 900, more than 900 prophecies that speak about the second coming of Jesus Christ. All the signs are being fulfilled, and they've been being fulfilled for 2,000 years. Jesus Christ, hear me when I tell you, somebody is coming back again. The first time, he came as a suffering uh, servant, but this time he's coming as a conquering king. The first time he came in grace and mercy, but this time he's coming with wrath and a judgment. So, there's more than 900 prophecies speaking about his second coming. There is no other piece of literature on the earth that is like the Bible. If it proved itself to be true about the first advent of Jesus, we can be sure that it will prove itself again with the second coming of Jesus Christ. It validates itself, the Word of God. Number two, therefore, it builds our faith. The prophetic word. If we can see how the Lord by his prophetic word has remained faithful concerning the promises toward Israel, we can see this as history has proven time and time and time again. And as recently as in 19. 48, when Israel, after nearly 2,000 years, once again became a nation because Isaiah prophesied this 2,700 years ago in chapter 11, verse 11, where he says, And God will bring his people from the four corners of the earth back to the nation of Israel. The second time. The first time was when they came back just from one place. They came back from Babylon. He fulfilled that promise. But Isaiah was specific when he said they're coming back a second time. They came back and in 1948, on May 14th, they were recognized as a nation once again around the earth. So I'm here to tell somebody, if God is faithful to his word to bring them... God is faithful to our salvation. Amen? Amen. We can rest assured. We can trust the church with Him. We can rest assured. We can trust our very lives with Him. We can uh, rest assured that we can trust our salvation to Him and get us home safely. Come on, somebody in the house, give God a praise. <clears throat> Number three, studying the prophetic word, it increases our biblical understanding by having a solid foundation of understanding the prophetic word of God and at least having a grasp of eschatology this will unlock our understanding of the Bible and we receive clarity and new revelation through the word of God concerning end times now I know some of you have been through some of these teachings before, so here's a little quiz for you, right? So here's a question. I know some of you probably have built some of those puzzles in the past. You know, the thousand pieces or hundred pieces. My speed's about five pieces. You know, that you give it like a three-year-old, right? <laughs> That's about my speed with a puzzle. But here's the question. What is the most important part of the puzzle? Come on, baby, say it. The box lid. Come on, give Ethel a, a round of applause. Hallelujah. Why is the box lid so important? It's so you can see what it's supposed to look like. 
as we study the word of God, we begin to see revelation. We begin to see as the end times unfold, it shouldn't surprise us. We can now fit the pieces of the puzzle together because now we know where the water is. We know where the trees are. We know where the horse is in the picture. So as we study the word of God, the eschatology, when we learn about the prophetic word and what it's supposed to look like, it's much easier to apply Matthew 24, Matthew 25, into that puzzle. Come on, are you following with me? Come on, do I got a witness in this house? So it gives us a greater understanding. We can identify the pieces and put it together. <clears throat> Number four, studying prophecy keeps our doctrine straight. Because, you know, there's a lot of movements within the body of Christ today. I don't know if you're aware of them, but one of them is the NAR, the New Apostolic Reformation, and Dominionism, and Kingdom Now Theology, and they all sound wonderful. And, uh, you know, what they do is they believe that there's going to be a huge end-time worldwide revival that's coming to the earth, and the glorified church is going to usher in the coming of Christ. That teaching is out there. Maybe some of you have heard it, and it's easy to jump into that. Oh, that sounds great. But there's a Greek word for that teaching. You all know it. Hogwash. <laughs> Listen, we know if we're students of the Word of God, if we know what the puzzle looks like, are you with me? If we know what it looks like, we know not to buy into these teachers and these movements because it does not bear out in the Word of God. Lastly, number five, the prophetic word prepares us. This is another reason why so many teachers stay away from end time preaching because they always say it's gloom and doom. But not to the believer. To us, it's boom, right? And zoom. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But listen, church, end time teaching is not designed to scare us, but rather prepare us. Now, if you're not saved, I hope, listen, this message scares the hell out of you. You better think about your destiny, my friend. But to the believer, we have no fear, not to scare, but to prepare us. Now for the unbeliever, the end days are gloom and doom, but not for the believer. Jesus said, when you see the, the beginning of these signs, your redemption is drawing nigh. to proclaim